Welcome to CCNA Scaling Networks Chapter 3. This chapter describes link aggregation and in particular we're going to talk about Ether channel technology and the two main protocols of BlackP and PageP that we use to achieve Ether channels. Now to begin with what we need to think about is link aggregation. So if we had a downstream access layer switch or a distribution switch going to the core and we wanted to provide redundant links the problem with that is that one of those redundant links would be blocked due to spanning tree. We do not want to loop, okay? So obviously spanning tree would block one of those two links, putting that state in blocking and opposite side would be in forwarding, depending upon which side is the root, root ports, and, and all the various items covered in chapter two, which was uh, spanning tree redundancy. But with either channel, what we can do is instead of these two links appearing as separate links, the two lines will actually appear as one link. It's a lot like the old PPP multi-link where we could take multiple dial-in links and make them appear to be a single link. Well, with this, we take multiple Ethernet links and put them into an Ether channel. The good news is uh, they appear as one link for spanning tree. They load balance across, uh, traffic can load balance across the two links. We get an aggregate which uh, will give us redundancy and we can put more than just two, and you can up put four, and in some cases six and even eight uh, channels together. So Ether channel in our setup for our 2960 supports up to eight full duplex bandwidth links of fast Ethernet or gigabit Ethernet channel with one switch to another. Now that is very, very important. Now, eight is the limit by Ether channel as a standard, but Cisco switches can support six Ether channels. Now, those Ether channels would be six different channels of eight or uh, eight 100 megabit or eight gigabit. Now, as switches get bigger and faster and different switches are available, the number of channels will change and we will get up where we can, and we can even do it now. We can create Ether channels with gigabit links, 10 gigabit links, and uh, I believe even 40 gigabit links. But what we have is we take up to eight or six ports and we put them together in a group, in an ether channel group, a port channel. And that group will then appear as a single link and it will have the bandwidth of all six or four or however many links we put together combined. Now, this increases speed and increases capacity. And this chapter, it's very important too, it's not really mentioned in this chapter at all, but Ether channels not only are between switches these days, in our data centers we're seeing Ether channels to our, uh, our server chassis. So we actually create channels of multiple links going from a Cisco switch over to a supported cha uh, chassis and possibly even just a, a server that's running the SXI. So be aware, these concepts go beyond just Cisco devices and Cisco switches and go into the entire data center itself. Now, our two main protocols we have are PageP and LACP. Now, PageP is a Cisco proprietary protocol. It is uh, set up to where, where you can enable it, and you can enable it in a couple different modes. One is on. Now, if you do a PageP and you set the mode to on, you have an Ether channel. There's no negotiation. There's no PageP being sent across between the two. Uh, that's basically an unconditional static Ether channel running neither PageP or LightP. All right. Honestly, for a lot of the networks, I could see I could see it best just to turn on your Ether channel. You know, ports one through four on switch one, or one and two on switch one, and ports one and two on switch two. You want those to be part of an Ether channel, so why not just turn them on and not have this negotiation protocol going back and forth. If, however, you do decide to use PageP or LightP, you're going to have some negotiation taking place. Now, you can set it to on and on, and if you do both sides to on, the channel is established because you basically have static, it's like a static route. You've statically assigned the ports that you want to be part of an Ether channel. You also could set one side to auto or desirable, and one side to desirable, and you will get an Ether channel. Basically what will happen here is one side with desirable will send 
information and say, I would like to create an Ether channel. And the other side in auto or desirable would respond and say, yes, we can become an Ether channel pair. And you would have a channel. If you had one side set to either on, auto, or desirable, and the other side not configured at all, so it's not set up to even do Ether channel, then you're going to have no channel establishment. This one's a little weird, and but if one side is set to on, so you statically make it an Ether channel, one side is desirable. The problem with that is S2 would send a signal uh, over to S1 saying, I would like to create an Ether channel, but it would never receive back anything from PageP saying, yes, let's become a channel. In other words, S1 statically assigned. It's not running a e aggregation protocol, and so it simply doesn't respond to the request to become a channel, and you have no channel. The last is auto on or auto auto. If you do auto auto, what happens is neither side ever sends information saying, I want to be a channel, an ether channel. It just sits there passively waiting for the other side, and you end up without a channel. LACP is an IEEE standard, which allows you to bundle ports together. And it has basically the same negotiation. Now, here's one thing I, I, I can help you remember. PageP, you have active, okay? You know, you have desirable and auto. Desirable and auto, so you got auto and desirable. Like P, you've got active and passive. So you can remember active and passive for like P, which means that desirable and auto are your modes for PageP. So auto and desirable. Like P is active and passive, which helps you with that. So if you're on, you're forcing it to be the same thing. You've, you've said B, an Ether channel. There's no like P, no page P running. It's just an Ether channel. If it's active and passive and active, then you have a channel. Same thing as desirable and auto. So active, it says, I would like to be an Ether channel. The opposite side is either active and will say, yes, I want to be an Ether channel, or it's passive and says, oh, if you want to be an Ether channel, I will be an Ether channel. If it's not configured on one side and it is on on the other, you have no channel. If it's on on one side or statically set to be a channel and the other side is active, it will never respond to the request to become a channel. And therefore, S2 would not make an Ether channel. And you do not get a channel. And if it's passive-passive, both sides are just waiting for someone else to make a decision. So, what are some of the <coughs> guidelines? Ether channel is really very simple. First off, all Ethernet interfaces must support Ether channel, but there's no requirement that the interfaces are physically contiguous or even on the same module in switches that have multiple slots. The speed and duplex on all the ports being put in either channel must match. The VLANs must match. In other words, if you're going to have uh, the Ether channel in a particular VLAN, then the VLANs on both sides have to match. They have to be in the same VLAN. Or if it's going to be a trunk, then you have to make each side a trunk. Last but not least, if you do have it set to be a trunk, you have to set it up to where all allowed VLANs are the same on both sides of the Ether channel. So how do we do it? Like P, very simple. Use the interface range command to grab both or whatever interfaces you wish to put into the Ether channel. Channel, uh, channel group 1, mode active. Then that creates the port channel, and that's an, a new entity, which is the port channel associated with this Ether channel. Then you go interface port channel 1, switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk allowed VLAN uh, 1, 2, and 20. You can just switch port trunk native VLAN, whatever you want to do, set it, and that would be set for that port channel. And you end up with Ether channel running like P. Again, active, passive, remember that. Now, obviously, you would need to go to the opposite side. So you've done this on S1, you would have to go to S2 and do the same thing, or at least set it to a mode where it will dynamically negotiate an Ether channel. Now, troubleshooting Ether channel is pretty simple. Show interface port channel 1 will tell you whether or not it's up or not. There's also a command show Ether channel summary, which is very useful right here. And it will tell you uh, your port channel number. It will tell you what protocol you're running, and it will tell you uh, what ports are in that particular ether channel. <clears throat> that tells us bundled in that port, port channel. Also tells you where it's down, uh, all these other items in here for this command. 
You can also do show either channel port channel. It will show you the port channel listings. And you can see again that it's like P, what ports are in the channel. And you can even do show interface, uh, the interface itself, ether channel, and it will tell you the ether channel, the status of that particular port within the ether channel. So it shows you this is an ether channel one, or channel group one, part of port channel one, and uh, it shows all these other items associated with the light P port, the partner port, and information about what is in the channel itself or what the channel is on that individual interface. Troubleshooting, here you see, uh, show you the channel summary and you see down, down, uh, you know, all the ports in the same VLAN. Are they trunking? Are, are the arranged VLANs, uh, are the allowed VLANs the same on both sides? Um, that's really, honestly, most of the time you've got a port down, you put on the wrong port, you configure one side as an ether channel, not the other side as an ether channel. Or you configure one side with lack P, one side with page P. Uh, and that could be obviously will not work because one's proprietary Cisco, one is open standard. That's a common issue. And then, you know, no interface one, you go back and do channel group one mode desirable. And you can actually set it to where it is now desirable. And see so in this case, what has happened? Lack P, on lack P. Okay, channel group more, channel group mode. You got desirable, desirable. Uh oh, look what I did. I've got no port channel okay on switch one I've got the mode one on and on switch two I've got it to desirable in other words I've hard set switch one statically assigned it to an e uh, ether channel on switch two I've said desirable so switch two is saying I would like to be a channel and switch one is never responding and you fix that by simply going into switch one and making the mode desirable and boom, you will then have an ether channel. All right, so pretty simple. Most of the time, the problems are not that difficult to troubleshoot with ether channel. And that's it. That's all ether channel is. It's a very simple protocol. It is used to aggregate links. And again, it's very important to note this is not just used today in networks to aggregate links between switches. That's all shown in this chapter. But we actually do have aggregation between Cisco switches and, and servers in our data center environments using ether channel or port bundles and it's the same concept as what we have here.